Now, Brylin Hollyhan, the chairman of the RNC's Youth Advisory Council, and Jennifer Nassau, former GOP chairwoman of Massachusetts and a Republican strategist. Uh, thank you both. And uh, Brylin, very interesting to have your take this morning for our viewers. I appreciate that. Before we get to that, um, Jennifer, I'll start with you. Sticking with, with listening to Senator Vance, we have Democratic California Senator LaFonce Butler, what she had to say on Harris's campaign walking back her stance on certain issues. Watch this part. In the 2020 primary, uh, the vice president praised the defund the police movement, and now she says she uh, doesn't support defunding the police. She called for decriminalizing crossing uh, the border illegally. Now she supports President Biden's policies for clamping down at the border. She supported Medicare for all at one point, eliminating private insurance, uh, and her campaign says she doesn't support that now. What do you think that voters should think when she's reversed herself on several issues just in the last four years? I think that voters should think that she's a human being who learns new things every single day. Again, no concern for flip-flopping. She learns something new every day, uh, brushes that off. Again, obviously, these questions should be for Kamala Harris, but you can't get any access to her, so you're asking other senates, senators their take. Uh, Jennifer, can I get your reaction to that soundbite we just played? Yeah, I mean, it's very creative, I think, on, on her part to say that this isn't flip-flopping, that she's a human and that she's learned. Here's the problem with that, is that she has been the vice president of the United States for the last four years. And we know that she has been the so-called border czar, and we know what a mess the border is. So I don't know, did she just flip-flop in the last two days, in the last two weeks, in the last two months? That, that does not hold any water. It's different when Senator Vance says that he's changed his mind on former President Trump. That's different. You can learn more about a person. But when you are, you are effectuating policy and you have one policy one day, you just don't learn overnight. Yeah. Uh, Brylin, wanted to go to you about the influence that Kamala Harris's campaign appears to have on the Gen Z voter, the youth demographic. Do they care that she's not being asked these tough questions about policy matters? Oh, we absolutely care. And as you saw there, CNN's even turning on her. The, their own people are turning on them and asking these questions. I call her Kamala the Chameleon because she's constantly flip-flopping every single day. We have no idea where she stands on every issue. And I find it interesting that she's the only politician I've ever seen in the history of the Internet that when you go to her website, she doesn't list a single stance on a single policy. She has a meet Kamala section, she has a donate section, a volunteer section, and that's it. Because she doesn't have a stance on policy. She's a DEI candidate who has run all this forever. President Trump made it clear this weekend at his Atlanta rally that we have an option. My generation has a choice in this election to elect somebody who will be fake, 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 or elect somebody who will fight, fight, fight for the American people. And I think my generation is going to make the right choice this November. She's pulling a lot of SAR power, right? She's got uh, some of the younger <laughs> voters who they listen to, Charlie XCX, um, having a brat summer. You've heard that being played out. We, she's had others perform at what they call a rally. Maybe it was a free concert and she spoke at the end. That might be the more, <laughs> more appropriate way to put it. Uh, Jennifer, I'll get your thoughts on this one as well. Um, we, we've been watching the big story today, the markets, right? Um, it's one thing to, to, to see these losses, but opening, uh, the futures were down at 1,100 for the Dow. It's been hovering right there in the red, around 1,000 points, I believe. Maybe it's right now at, at 800, the NASDAQ taking a major hit. Um, even Trump putting something out on Truth Social saying that the, the stock market would tank. Yeah, here it is. Uh, still down at two and a half percent. So down a thousand points. This has been bad since Thursday. It is getting worse. There are major tensions in the Middle East. Um, talk to me about this and how this could be handled by the Harris campaign. Will they even speak about what's happening here um, with the, the economy? Well, again, she's the vice president of the United States. They have something to do with the market volatility and making sure that the markets actually feel stable, that the United States is stable. Clearly, with her being the pick, the, nom the potential nominee for the Democratic Party, clearly the markets are reacting to that news. They didn't react to the Trump uh, nomination the same way. And so I think that that is a big problem for her because, listen, at the end of the day, you can slice and dice this. They can talk about the, the climate. They can talk about abortion. But the number one issue that everyone is concerned about is always the economy. Yeah. And, and Bryland, I think that that is, quite frankly, an issue that spans generations.
Everyone wants to save money and everyone wants the economy to be looking good. She stood by Bidenomics for the longest time. Is she going to now try to distance herself from what we're seeing? Well, you're exactly right. It is hard enough for my parents and grandparents' generation to survive in Biden's economy, uh, but it's even harder for my generation to get our start in, in this Bidenomics that we're seeing today. I mean, the constant theme that we hear from my generation when we talk to Never Trumpers is that they don't like Trump's personality. Well, I've got to say, I would prefer mean tweets any day over being on the brink of World War III or having an economic collapse. And I think my generation is going to remember that when we go to the ballot box in November. I'm a first time voter. And I've got to say, as I prepare to graduate high school this year, move off to college, rent my first apartment, and become financially independent, I want to live under a Trump economy, not a Harris economy, because we're seeing what a Harris economy is like. This is the Kamala crash, just like President Trump saying. My generation is going to realize that. Yeah, you actually put out a tweet uh, for Control Room EE24. You put out this tweet saying, or excuse me, on X, posting on social media saying Kamala Harris and the DNC are so desperate to bribe my generation's vote that they're paying influencers $20,000 to come to their <laughs> convention. The GOP creator program at our convention had 100 plus influence, influencers and none were bought and paid for. Sad, is Gen Z smarter than this? Will they see through the Democratic ploys? That from our guests on the panel. We appreciate the time, by the way. Uh, Brylan Hollyhan and uh, Jennifer Nassor. Always a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Have a good week. Got it. Vice President Kamala Harris refusing to debate former President Donald Trump on September 4th on another cable news network. Why she's demanding the debate take place September 10th on ABC News. The one agreed with Trump and Biden, not her. That just ahead on National Report.